if you watched my last vlog. This is the scene of the squirrel crime, kind of where that white thing is. <laughs> Literally dropped out of here. And it's the end of the sidewalk. And basically, it could have been me. Now I'm like, what is that? That's somebody's garbage. Charming, right? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, happy Saturday, happy week two of series September in which I will read some series. <laughs> so, I left you on a cliffhanger in the first video, but you've probably figured out by now if you follow me on other stuff. I started reading Hangman by Daniel Cole, which is the second book in the Ragdoll series. So I was doing some audio of it yesterday because I really enjoyed the audiobook narrator, but I was also finding that I was missing stuff. So I switched to physically reading it last night and I think I'm like a hundred pages in. So without giving too much away because I don't want to spoil book number one, we are following some of the same characters from the first book. We have some new characters and the first book took place in the UK. The second book is taking us from the UK to New York. Oh, look at that morning sun. Look at that sunrise. So we have some copycat killings happening. Start, like one will happen in New York and then it will get mirrored in the UK. So that's kind of where we are. Same goriness, <laughs> same. It's not the same dark humor yet. So TBD, but I, I'm very much enjoying the New York part of it because it's places I understand and know. And I feel like that always kind of makes it a little bit more, I don't know what's the right word. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful out this morning. Like they're in Grand Central and I know it like the back of my hand. So it like takes on like a different understanding maybe. Oh my God, I'm dying for this morning. It's like 59 degrees, it's a little humid, but it's cool and it's beautiful. Let me flip you guys around. Okay, it's a little further in the walk, but I am enjoying the quiet. One bike rider, two dog walkers. Who's keeping count? Me. But I, yeah, I didn't sleep well. I shouldn't say I didn't sleep well last night. I was up at like 20 of six. Why? <laughs> and couldn't quite go back to sleep. And I had a headache. Womp womp. Which, I don't know, it just happens every once in a while. So I just decided to get up, which is fine because I have a lot to do today. I made a promise to myself yesterday that I basically broke, that I wasn't going to squander my time yesterday. And I did get a bunch of stuff done, but I also did not make the dent I wanted to make in my to-do list, but I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to manage it all, get it all done. It's like I want to do too many things, I have too many ideas, and then I get so caught up in like one particular thing, but anyway. As I said in vlog number one, I finished Final Gambit, I finished Husband Material. So I am currently listening to, I just started it this morning, The Thin Man by Dashiell Hammett. So I have seen some of the movies. We used to watch The Thin Man over and over again when I was a kid with my parents, with Myrna Loy and William Powell, and I just loved it. And in my head, there were a whole bunch of books in the series, but it turns out he just wrote The Thin Man in 34. And then he wrote the stories for the movies that followed. I'm considering this a series. <laughs> I know Kristen and Sarah aren't going to come for me, but I've always been curious about the original book. So I'm listening to it and I'm enjoying it so far. So Dashiell Hammett wrote Maltese Falcon, Sam Spade. So it's very much in that vein, but it's kind of, it's kind of fun just to listen to the, like the origin story and then I do have the movie so I'm gonna watch it afterwards maybe not today but like after I finish the book just to see how much of it is true to the original and yeah it's just fun it's New York City it's the 30s and it's Christmas time right now and there's been a murder so stay tuned and then other than that I have all of yesterday's to-do list that I didn't finish. 
plus today's. I did get my video edited to go up tomorrow. I just need to do the bells and whistles on it. And that's kind of like the big thing I have to get done today because I'm really trying to stick to a schedule. And I would like to film today because I feel like it's going to be quiet, which is always nice. But we'll see what happens. So on that note, I'm going to keep on walking, keep on enjoying the quiet. I also, unrelated to everything, really want to read Daisy Darker. So I started it right before series September. I abandoned ship because I was like, let me just start the month off a of series. But I keep seeing more and more things about it. So maybe after Hangman, I'll go that way. I don't know. We'll see. I just can't decide. And I was trying to figure out what to pick up next. And I was looking at the list of things I talked about in my non-TBR TBR. And I was like, dang it, I want to read all these books. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to pick up next. But for now, I'm going to keep on walking and enjoying my nice, quiet Saturday morning. What I just found at my little library, it, is, it doesn't even look like anybody ever read it before. I've read this, but I had the audiobook of it. So I'm super excited and I'm a thousand percent taking this. There's nothing else in here that's really exciting to me. Um, or that looks like it's in good condition, but one and done. Thank you. I feel like it just goes to show you never know what hidden treasures you're going to find when you're out on a morning walk. because I had mentioned that I did a bit of a thrifted book haul. And if you guys, you might have already seen this on Instagram, but whatever, I just thought I would show you guys some of the books I picked up in another thrifted online book haul that I did with thrift books and Better World Books. So if you watched the book haul I did, like legit book haul I did, I went to my library that has a book room, which is currently reopened on a limited base. Like they, they're reopened like twice a week for limited hours kind of a thing. And I wandered in as I tend to do. Anyway, I started picking up a bunch of Patricia Cornwell books because I have most of her collection. Let me just, let me just bring you guys here and talk to you at the same time. So I've been slowly replacing mass market paperbacks that I have. And then I have a bunch of her hardcovers, which I accumulated over the years, but then stopped buying after this point. And then I've started to fill in the gaps. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, justify, justify, justify. Here we go. So I got red mist. I really need to work on the lighting of this here. So it's just blowing itself out here. This is later in the series. I'm not even gonna tell you what it's about because it doesn't matter. But can we talk about the fact that the end pages of this, which are also metallic and so stinking cool, it's like this metallic graveyardy creepiness. And I don't know, I haven't gone back through here to see when she started doing PC on the front and like, look at this like blast of red for the red mist, dying. But like the end papers are so stinking cool in this book. I need to go see what else <laughs> her other end papers look like. I don't know if I just got lucky here, but beautiful. Makes me want to read the series some more. I picked up Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. So I picked up Hannibal. Where did I put it? Dang it, it was here somewhere. Oh, it's over here, it doesn't matter. I picked up Hannibal at my library book sale, but Red Dragon is the first in the series. And I have, I'm like, I've been filming for like two days. There's still books everywhere because I haven't put them away. I have Silence of the Lambs too. But when I was talking about that, people were telling me to read this first. I'm a little bummed. It's not like in as great condition as I want. You know, there are some drawbacks to online thrifting because you can't see it. So it's all curled at the bottom. Or if you can see it better that way. So anyway, my game plan is to read this and if for some reason I'm totally obsessed, I don't know if I'll try and get a better copy of it. I mean, cart before the horse, right? So anyway, first in the 
Hannibal series. I've got that. This is, this one hurts a little bit, only in the sense that I 1000% had this book and I don't know if I unhauled it in a move or accidentally or what I did, but this is Black Notice by Patricia Cornwall. So I had this book in hardcover and I looked high and low for it. I <laughs> was talking to Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand and I was like, I know I had this book. Like I, I, I thousand percent recognize the cover of it. And I'm like looking and I'm like, did I just miss it on my own shelf? I don't even know. And she's like, just look for it. Don't rebuy it. And I'm like, I've looked, I can't find it. I think I just unhauled it in just one of those moments. So I repurchased it again. I got a good deal for it. Here we just have like the basic PC on the cover and no end page extravaganza in it. So again, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work and see when that kicked in. This one is from 1999. So I picked up that one. I also picked up Blowfly. So this one's a little bit smaller, but it's fine. I used to be in one of those little book clubs that had the smaller books. So I don't mind. I don't need them to all be the same hardcover. I just want them to be in very good to like new condition. And then let me show you the last Patricia Cornwall. So this is Port Mortuary. So this one also has different pretty, oh, this one has a cool PC too. So we've got like the dog tags here. I don't, again, I don't know when she started doing this and then the dog tags here. And then this is the end page. So she's a force. Oh, dang. I just realized that this is a little bit torn here on the edge, but that's okay. I only paid a couple bucks for each of these, you guys. I have nothing to complain about and the book itself is absolutely perfect. So I'm really kind of making me get excited for this. Kind of makes me, all that remains is the next book I need to read in the series. <laughs> kind of makes me want to pick it up now, series September. So we'll see. And then the last book I got is Lisa Jewell's The Girls in the Garden. So I was convinced that I already owned this book, hadn't read it, but was convinced I owned it because after I like rediscovered her with, don't you love it when you're like in a good seat when you're filming, then she was gone. I started to compulsively feel the need to like regather her books because I had unhauled a couple of her books. I shouldn't say I felt the compulsive need. After I read this, I was like tuned back into her. So I bought The Third Wife. I bought The House We Live In, The House We Grew Up In. I haven't read either of them, judge. And I thought that I bought this, but I think I just recognized the cover and it also kind of reminded me of though not really, Lying in Wait by Liz Nugent. That one's got a creepy hand coming out of the grass. I don't know, something about this just reminded me of that. So I picked this up for, again, peanuts. And it's in great condition. This used to be a library book, so it does have the little library thing on the inside, but it's okay. And I took the cover off. So the cover underneath is in great condition. So I'm really excited for this one. So there are a couple more Lisa Jewell books that I would like to get my mitts on. So I wanna repurchase Ralph's party because I got rid of it and then after the party is the sequel which came out I think like 10 or 12 years later or something like that but anyway <sighs> rambling so that's my baby book haul that I did of thrifted books and I'm very excited for it but now I am so now I'm gonna like have to see <laughs> these other Patricia Cornwall books have end papers in them Ooh, this one's purple on the inside. Not exciting, but at the same time beautiful. Oh, and then this one I met her too. It's upside down, but I think that was at Arts and Leisure Weekend at the Times. Oh, here we go. It starts here. Psychiatric Hospital. Her books are gigantic. But then the PC is not super jazzy. This is such an exercise in nonsense. How many people are collectively rolling their eyes? And then Scarpetta Factor, yeah, this has it too. So this is New York Office of the Medical Examiner on the inside. So, oh, and this one says Patricia Cornwell, not PC. Fascinating, fascinating to nobody but me. All right, I'm gonna go and clean up my mess from yesterday <laughs> because I was so burnt out at that point that I didn't want to do anything else, but I'll keep you guys updated.
and what's going on in life. See you later. Sunday this day just flew which is totally fine I did go for a walk this morning I was just really enjoying the quiet of it all and part way through I was like oh I should like catch up and vlog and I was like you know what I'm just gonna like take the morning to myself which I did which was great so obviously it's September 11th and I know this can be certainly a heavy weighty day for a lot of people and I realized you guys aren't gonna see this video till much later but for anyone who is having a heavy weighty day or had one, I hope everyone's doing all right. It's just hard to put words together. And yeah, I'm just thinking of everyone today. So just took some time to myself this morning and kind of just took some time to myself all day today. And I made kind of this master list last night. I tend to do a brain dump list, which tends to have things that are not feasible to get done in a day. It's sort of like the everything I would like to do. So what I tried to do for today, um, and if anybody's wondering, I'm sitting on like a bouncing exercise ball, which is why I'm moving around. <laughs> Am I exercising? No, <laughs> but I'm just sitting on the ball. To-do list. So I tried to make a list of things that I could like conceivably achieve today. And I've been picking away at it during the day to day, which has been good. I also did some things that weren't on the list, but I had wanted to get done, but forgot, kind of forgot to put on the list. But anyway, and then I spent a lot of time watching baseball cause it's, I'm gonna fall off this ball that I'm sitting on because it's my favorite thing to do right now. So anyway, for anyone who cares, and again, this is going up after the fact. So the Mets won <laughs> back in first place. But anyway, I took a complete pivot on my reading. So I had mentioned yesterday that I was feeling kind of slumpy. I feel like I mentioned it to you guys. Did I mention it to my friends? I think I mentioned it to you guys. And I was afraid of like getting into a slump, but I was listening to The Thin Man, which I was enjoying, but I also was not feeling drawn back to it kind of end of day yesterday when I was thinking about, oh, I'm gonna go for a walk and I always wanna make sure like my phone is charged and all things. And also reading Hangman by Daniel Cole, which I'm enjoying, but sort of similarly, like it's definitely dark and gritty like Ragdoll was, which I love, but I wasn't feeling drawn to it. So I wound up going, I'm doing a free trial with Audible right now. So I'm trying to maximize that. So I downloaded Oracle by Andrew Piper, but in full disclosure, I downloaded it because, I don't know if you guys can see, I might just have to pop up a thing. Joshua Jackson is the audiobook narrator, so seeing as how I'm just in love with Pacey Witter and Joshua Jackson in general, I was like, I'm just gonna listen to this book. <laughs> so it's actually, he's a psychic for the FBI and it has some supernatural elements to it. It obviously has some mystery. We have women and young girls who keep going missing and he's being brought in to help find them. So there's there's like an Amityville horror element to it and there's layers and there's baggage and he winds up having to go back to his hometown. So we have the reluctant return home, which I love. So I am probably like 55 or 60% of the way into it. It's like a nine hour audiobook, but I started it this morning when I was out for my walk and just got totally into it. And just to make it even more embarrassing, one of the characters' names is Audrey. And every time Joshua Jackson says her name, do you want to guess like how much of like like a giggle and like a twinkle I get every time I hear that. It was like on Dawson's Creek when Busy Phillips was his girlfriend and her name was Audrey, even when he, she wasn't his girlfriend. And he would say her name and it just <laughs> makes me so happy, which is, I know, stupid. And then I'm also reading, where is it? So it's just the cover because the book is on my nightstand. So I decided to pick up Grave Reservations by Sherry Priest. So I started to read this last night. There actually is going to be a second book in the series. This is the first book, it came out last year. 
feel like end of last year I got this for Christmas as a gift. So this book is also about a psychic, which is just sort of really strange. I had no intention of reading two psychic books, but this is more, I don't know if this is even more cozy. I'm not that far into it yet, but I'm really enjoying it. So this one is about a woman named Lita Foley and it is devoted friend, struggling travel agent, and inconsistent psychic. So when the book opens, like the first scene of the book, she impulsively rebooks Seattle PD detective Grady Merritt's flight and her life changes in ways she could never have foretold. So she's literally on the phone with him being like, hey, I rebooked your flight. And he was like, why did you rebook my flight? Like my original flight isn't canceled. I'm at the airport. Like I got caught in traffic, but I'm like at the gate. And she's like, no, 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 I have you on this other flight. Don't get on that flight. And he winds up missing it because he's late. Like the gate closes, he can't get on it. And then the plane he was supposed to be on blows up at the airport. So he starts to think that she's got some special abilities and that he can partner with her and use them to help investigate a cold case that he's working on. So that's kind of like where I am in the book, which is super early in the book. I don't even know if I'm like 35 pages in, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm enjoying the writing. There's definitely like some wit and some humor and some snark to it. And I'm just having a good time with it. So I'm not DNFing the other two books. I just feel like the mood I just, I just, like the mood wasn't there. I felt the need for a change, I made a change. So I'll keep you guys posted. And I'm still reading series because this, it's not a Joshua Jackson book, but he narrates it. I'm pretty sure there's a second book in the series or maybe like a novella. It doesn't matter either way. I'm listening to it and I'm having a good time with it. So like I said in my other video, or this might've been in one of the many videos I, filmed yesterday because I filmed a whole bunch of videos yesterday too. I'm not necessarily going to only read series this month. I'm just going to try and, you know, go where the wind blows, but also try and fill out my bingo board. So I've also totally been enjoying the bingo board of it all. So I did the book list summer readathon, which was a three month bingo, bang, bingo, three month bingo board. And now I'm doing series September. So I'm kind of toying with the idea of maybe creating a year end, like last three months of the year bingo board just for fun just not with like any specific books in mind or not necessarily with a specific theme just thinking about a year-end challenge kind of fun thing to do so kind of toying with that but other than that it's been a good day i did some chores i did some ironing yay on that note i need to get back to some video editing which i would like to get done so on that note i'm gonna go and keep cracking away at the day and I'll keep you guys posted on what's going on. So I am ducking out to run a couple of errands, totally legit. <laughs> and I'm kind of totally near the Barnes and Noble, by which I mean I'm sitting in the parking lot right now, but it was right near where I had to be. So totally legit. So I'm not in the, like, I mean, I'm like always in the market to buy something new. I'm not really in the market to buy something new, but I just thought I would pop in and maybe get like a raspberry lemonade or something or maybe just get nothing at all uh but it's so beautiful outside and not that I couldn't find other ways to be outside but I just thought do you ever have the thing where like I don't want to go out for just like one thing I feel like I want to maximize what I'm doing today so anyway um I'm just gonna duck in and see what's what so I'm not planning to be out very long but yeah that's just kind of the thing so anyway I did want to quickly mention I I was gonna say finished I restarted I like it wasn't even like a soft DNF. I just pressed pause on Hangman by Daniel Cole, which is the second Ragdoll series book. I was reading it last week. It wasn't totally gripping my attention. So I um, pivoted to something new, but I picked it back up this morning and I was going to be like, oof, it's slow, but stuff is happening, which I'm excited about at this point. And I don't want to be one of those people. I hate those people who are like, I shouldn't say I hate that's so aggressive. I get frustrated 
and I feel like this is a topic for possibly later when it comes to book reviews and people talking about books because I have so many opinions <laughs> but when people say like oh a book wasn't so good but then like at the 60% mark something happened or it took until the 40% mark for this to happen like it's fine to tell me it was a slow start or things happen, but don't tell me exactly where it happens. So I don't want to tell you where I am in the book. Other than to say I was losing a little bit of hope this morning and then my hope was restored. I feel like I'm stepping on something. So that makes me super happy. I definitely don't feel like it's as darkly funny as Ragdoll was, but maybe that'll change. There have been a couple lines, but not the same as the first book. And then... I'm a little bummed because some of the characters I really liked in book one have not appeared yet in book two, and I thought they would have. And then I was thinking, like, is it like a Dublin murder squad where it just focuses on other characters? But it's not, because if you don't read the first book in this series, if you don't read Ragdoll first, Hangman doesn't make sense, so you have to read these in order. But maybe, I mean, there's like plenty of book to go. Maybe my characters will show up. One of them just showed up a little bit. I want more. And I just would like more of some of the characters from the first book. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, it's it's like a beautiful day, but it's getting warm just sitting in the car. So I'm going to get up and just see what's up at Barnes & Noble. I feel like hopefully the sunshine has changed so you can tell. Would you imagine, or like, could you imagine if I just like filmed a clip and then stopped and then started again and acted like something actually happened? I actually went to Barnes & Noble. Um, and it was a bust, but in a like totally fine way. They're in the middle of reorganizing and moving around mystery, thriller, fiction, horror, and romance. So they haven't changed the signs and everything's interwoven and a whole bunch of stuff is not in alphabetical order. So probably best worst thing because I wasn't tempted because there was so much I just couldn't kind of stalk some of my favorite people and it was just a little bit messy, a little bit messy. So it's totally fine. So I did see a couple books that I've read <laughs> and I saw the new cover. I don't know how new it is for Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I saw that paperback was on the table they have a little horror section set up a little horror section that sounds so condescending they have a horror section set up with that perfect Stephen King quote like maybe dead is better which I love so good so so good but anyway got out unscathed did not get the Starbucks instead I was like you know what the wine store is here too so I went and picked up a lovely bottle of wine to try I don't know if it's lovely or not I haven't tried it so I'm really enjoying this wine store though because they have a ton of organic wines that are super reasonable which is great and they have my favorite bogle but anyway so i'm gonna get cracking it's so just nice outside and i'm living for it but i've got to get home so i'm gonna go do that now but yeah successful stretch my legs no complaints hey guys it's much later on wednesday and if i was a better booktuber <laughs> i would have done this <laughs> but it's vlogging so it's fine I'm sorry if the lights look a little bit weird or whatever okay where was I end of the day so I did read a little bit at lunch I'm reading grave reservations I'm actually holding it for you guys this time I am literally at the halfway mark and I'm enjoying it it's it's I feel like it's maybe like Finley Donovan kind of cozy because it's so far not bloody murdery graphic murdery like some of the other books I read but it has like a little bit of an edge to it I would say so I'm enjoying it so far there's some good humor to it I'm enjoying the characters I have no idea where the story is going to go or how this mystery is going to go or how it's all going to get wrapped up but I'm enjoying it which is what I'm looking for in a book I'm having a good time with it so that's good but earlier today I had mentioned when I was in the car about book reviews so I've been having like a lot of feelings lately <laughs> and I was thinking about making a whole separate video but I was like I don't think it really merits a whole separate video but I like you guys turn to other creators for 
book reviews, for book suggestions, for ideas of what I wanna read next, and I'm always looking. So whether it's like BookTube or Bookstagram, I'm always looking. And I have found lately, so I talked about this in another video I filmed, which I don't think you guys have seen yet, but if you have, if you if it's up i'll post it if not it's coming but i had a great comment in one of my videos about why it seems like everybody talks about the same books and is that intentional and is there like kind of something going on behind the scenes and i think there's probably like a few factors at play where people gravitate towards new releases i think that's part of it and i also personally know that i follow people who have similar tastes to me so i see a lot of books but i was having a frustration point similar i think to this comment which to me opened a great conversation and it was a terrific comment and i encourage everybody to share a very constructive discussion opening topic comments because i loved this one where i was feeling uninspired a few weeks ago or maybe it was like a month ago when i was flipping through people that i follow and i was seeing the same stuff over and over again and i just was looking for something new and then i started to listen to people's reviews of stuff so here's my here's my quibble for today is I'm starting to get a little bit discouraged by how some people are reviewing books. And I talked about this also in another video where I had seen some negative reviews or some low star reviews, but I didn't really read them for Husband Material, which is the sequel to Boyfriend Material, and I was really jazzed for it. And I was a little bit concerned slash a little bit bummed to see some one and two star reviews because so many people had given Boyfriend Material four and five, myself included. So I went into it a little bit trepidatious, but I wound up very much enjoying it. I wound up giving it four stars on Goodreads. And after I finished it, I did go back to read other people's reviews. And there were so many very interesting, and this is literally all on Goodreads, which I think is part of it. So many really interesting spoiler filled, but with caveats that like here are the spoilers and the hidden and everything about what didn't work for people with the book. And while those reviews did not change my feelings about the book, it definitely gave me new perspective and understanding of what didn't work for certain people. And when I'm listening to somebody else talk about a book, I am looking for non-spoilery non constructive reasons why a book did or didn't work for somebody. And I have found with creators who I follow, not all of them, but some, where their negative reviews are either super vague, which I understand you don't want to spoil stuff, or just, I don't know if I'm coming at this where like it hurts my heart as a writer and I know you have to have a thick skin about stuff, but I don't find it productive or helpful to just say that a book was like writing was lazy or a character is stupid or it's dumb. You know, words like that keep coming up over and over again. And not only do I find it very disrespectful to the author and the work, you can not like a book, like that's totally fine but actually tell me why, like give me something I can grasp and hold on to and understand. And again, I know it can be hard in a YouTube format if you don't want to spoil stuff, but maybe give a warning and then go into more of it or kick me over to your Goodreads and do it there. But I just, I find it so disrespectful to the authors to just like poop all over their work and to say, these very dismissive things about it in very generalized terms, which I feel like is just not helpful for people who are looking for feedback or looking for a review or looking for a reason to pick up a book or maybe realize, hey, this is not for me. And I've also found recently with some books, because I also love to see why somebody didn't like a book that I liked, because part of it is, I'm just nosy and curious. And part of it is I love to hear other other people's perspective of what didn't work for them. And this is what like, books like are totally subjective and i always find such a curiosity about why somebody who i follow we could both love one book and then we could both be like on different ends of the spectrum on a different book and i love to know what that is it's, i don't know i don't know why i need to know but i just enjoy knowing it but i found a lot of people spoiling thrillers in particular by not saying what happens in a book but referencing another book with a very clear twist in it so telling me you didn't like a book but like i'm not going to spoil it for you but safe to say if you loved 
the ending of Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough, then maybe you'll like this. But if you hated where that book went, then you're gonna hate this because this book goes in the exact same way. Like you have now ruined that book for me. And if somebody hasn't read Behind Her Eyes, they might be like, I don't know what you're talking about. So that also wasn't helpful to me. But to me, like you just ruined the book for somebody who maybe was interested in it. And I just feel like, I don't know why I'm so frustrated by it, but I think I just hit that same wall of, I'm so blown away by so many thoughtful, critical comments about husband material and by so many dismissive comments on, on like the other end of the spectrum on other books. And again, like not every book has to work for everybody. I'm not trying to convince anybody to love the books that I love, but if I'm on the fence about a book and I just hear someone say it's lazy and dumb, that's totally rude to the author, whether or not you liked the book and it's not at all helpful to the people who come to you for guidance or for ideas or for inspiration of what to pick up next. I don't know. I don't know why this is like such it's like a thorn in my side, but I've just been, it's just been bothering me and I haven't been able to let it go. <laughs> I, probably, I just need to let it go because it doesn't matter at the end of the day. And I think part of it is also, it makes me want to do better with how I review books and it's making me try to be more thoughtful about how I review books. And I will never say, I've never said any of those words and I'm sure I have been dismissive and I'm sure I have been unhelpful at times and I don't want to be that you know i want to be able to give you guys actual constructive feedback on a book for better or for worse without spoiling the book and hopefully like my goal here is not just to talk about books because i'm obsessed with them but also to be able to be a connection for other people with books and also to connect with you guys to talk about the books that we love or don't love and i don't mind when people don't like the books that i love or i don't mind when people love the books that i didn't like like it's all good it's all good i'm totally fine with that and again i find that kind of fascinating because it would be a lot less interesting if everybody just agreed on everything or i only followed people who agree with me because again i follow people who read a lot of the books that i like to read but we don't always agree on the books so that makes it less boring i guess that's not really the right term but anyway I don't know. I don't know. I just was feeling far too disturbed by all of it. So I would be curious like how you guys feel about book reviews and what's helpful to you guys and if that bothers you or not or if again a lot of this could be the writer in me just being uber sensitive to it and I know negative reviews happen and I know there's I've certainly had negative feedback on my work before and like critique groups and writing conferences and things. Sorry, my memory card was full because of course it was. So now we're totally at a different angle because you didn't see that before. But we're just, we're, we're gonna just roll with it and take that as a hint that it's time for Audrey to stop talking. <laughs> it's time for Audrey to go enjoy her evening. So it's still so beautiful outside. It's like fall is so close. I can taste it. I can't wait. It's not sweater weather cool, but it is definitely if you are not in the direct sunshine, it's cool, there's a breeze, it's all happening. So I'm gonna go out and enjoy it. I'm gonna enjoy my evening. I hope you guys have a great evening. By the time you see this, it'll be so far in the future, but I hope whatever happened for you guys on Wednesday, September 14th was amazing. So <laughs> there you go. I will probably just talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Not exactly sunglass weather, but my eyes got big bags on them, so we're doing it. <laughs> but it's so beautiful. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. Oh, it's not gonna work. Um, the beautiful sunrise. I'm just, you guys know, fascinated, fascinated by nature. So, out and about, with all the other people trying to get a jump start on the day. Uh, my really important information, my water bottle is leaking, which I don't understand. I mean, it's not really high quality, but it's annoying because my hand's all wet. <laughs> Never mind that half my water is 
winding up on the street. I checked the cab. It's I don't even know what's happening here. But anyway, I'm listening to Hangman. I'm so conflicted. There's parts of this book I'm very much enjoying and there's other parts I'm kind of not. So it's definitely lacking the charm of Ragdoll, I think. And it's lacking for me that need to, oh, you can see it better now. Distance is great. The compulsive storytelling. Ah, I love it. So I'm going to finish it because I'm curious enough to know what's going to happen. Oh my goodness. I look like an angel. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I like it enough to continue with it, but I don't love it the way I love Dragdoll. So we'll see what happens at the end. And I'm very curious. And I did pick up book three. So I don't know if I'm going to read it next or not. And then I'm also still reading Grave Reservations, which I'm enjoying, which is much lighter, as I said, like the cozy-ish thing. There's a lady coming towards me. So it has a little bit of that predictability factor. So hold on a sec. morning. It's Friday. It's 52 degrees. I'm wearing a vest. I'm wearing gloves. I'm totally happy about it. I live for this weather. Although, of course, this morning I was like, oh, what do I wear? What do I wear? The problems are real. So, anyway, good morning. Happy Friday. I'm so happy to be out. I woke up at five. Not by choice. I tried to fall back asleep, didn't go so well. So anyway, I'm up with the birds. Not as gorgeous of a sunrise as yesterday, but we've got time. So I finished Hangman. I'll talk to you about that later when I'm not huffing and puffing. <laughs> and I just started reading and listening to Ralph's Party by Lisa Jewell, which is her first book, which I haven't read since I discovered it way back in the day. And it turns out she wrote a sequel to it, like 10 years later, called After the Party, which I didn't know. So technically this counts for series September, but either way, I had downloaded it from my library, so I wanted to give it a listen for old time's sake. So I'm doing that. I'm gonna walk for a bit and then I'll check in. Okay. I'm heading downhill, so maybe I won't. I swear I'm not as out of shape as I sound. I'm just trying to walk really fast and build up a sweat. But this woman just ran past me, like out for a run, in shorts and a tank top. And I'm like, you're crazy. It was 52 degrees when I left the house today. And she's probably looking at me in an X scarf and my vest. And I still have my gloves on just because I'm lazy at this point. And she's probably like, that chick is crazy. <laughs> Is she wearing all those clothes? But anyway, I just was cracking up because I saw her go by and I was like, how are you not cold? Like, I realize you're running, but even so. Anyway, so I am delighting in Ralph's party. I remember next to nothing about this book plot wise, except that I absolutely loved it. It totally turned me on to Lisa Jewell. It's definitely in that Bridget Jones diary era vein. It's about a group of people who live in an apartment house in London and they are intertwining stories. So new roommates, new relationships, challenging relationships, heartbreak, revenge, love, getting older, which I laugh at now because they're all in their thirties, which <laughs> I'm sure seemed very old to me the first time I read this. And now I'm like, girls, you're good. You're totally good, but I'm totally enjoying it. It's like a, it's like a warm hug. Lisa Jewel is a warm hug to me, so. I'm gonna keep on going and yeah, what is happening? These people have really nice flowers. So anyway, that's my quick update. I'm the crazy one who's overdressed. Lady Runner is the crazy one who's underdressed. 
Hi everybody, it's Saturday afternoon. I was editing the vlog and I realized I had more footage than I realized, so I am going to end this after Friday. Just know I've already filmed some stuff on Saturday. I don't know if I'm gonna do a weekly vlog for the rest of series September or if I'm gonna do like the last two weeks together because I have a whole bunch of stuff going on the next couple weeks, but I did want to officially conclude the vlog since I didn't do that yesterday because I didn't think that was going to be the end of things. But a little teaser as we move ahead into the rest of the month. I am 85% of the way into Ralph's Party by Lisa Jewell. I listened to that a bunch today while I was doing some stuff around the house. I am so obsessed. And then I have I think 50 pages left in Grave Reservations by Sherry Priest. I feel like I haven't even shown the cover of this, or maybe I showed this earlier in the week. So this, it dawned on me finally, reminds me of Hollywood Homicide by Kelly Garrett, by that, like reminds me of that series. So it's cozy, slight edge, I would say. There's no cursing, maybe there's like one curse word, but it is murder. So it's not totally violent, like it's, you know people are dead, but you're not getting like a description, like in a hangman kind of a way, ragdoll kind of a way. So I feel like the Aurora Tea Garden series would also be like a good comp for this. So kind of Hallmark mystery, but like a little bit edgier than that. So I'm definitely enjoying it. The writing is good. I feel like it definitely leans into a lot of the tropes of a cozy. So while the story and the murderer and that part isn't predictable, I feel like some of the steps our characters are taking are familiar of what's going on and it's not a criticism it's just a i feel like a feature of the genre if that makes sense so i hope to finish this i don't know if i'm gonna finish this tonight there's a baseball game on we'll see what happens and i also have a whole bunch of other stuff that i need to get done so we'll see where it happens but either way i am like around the same percentage mark done with both of these books so i'm making great series progress and then i think i might read a non-series book next so wait and see wait and see wait and see so until next time thank you guys so much for watching thanks for being here following me following the vlogs and i will see you guys in the next video bye everybody